Hi folks, John with the Wingman Woman 5 channel. Thanks for checking in. It's been a while since I posted a video, I know. The holidays are always rough for me. Uh, with that J-O-B, it takes up a lot of hours, but the show must go on. Tonight we're gonna be talking about purchasing used bows and uh, just the do's and don'ts. I happen to find this one on the internet. This is a bear archery. This is a bear cat. It's in awesome condition. Now, I'm going to guess on this, and uh, there's probably some archery historians out there that can uh, set me straight. These bows, I'm guessing, originated in the late 60s, early 70s, uh, probably about the time of the Bear Minuteman and the Bear 76er craze when they all came out. It was about that time frame. There's been a couple different versions of this bow that were out there. I know that um, Bear experimented with different risers with wood limbs and such. I was lucky enough to find this uh, on eBay and uh, we're gonna talk a little bit uh, about that today. Uh, do's and don'ts, I get a lot of questions on the channel about that. And the first thing you have to do as with anything is your research. You wanna do some research before you pull the trigger and buy one of these bows. Uh, when you're looking at it, I mean, this is probably a 45 or 50 year old bow. So with that, keep in mind, there may be issues with limbs being bent or warped. Uh, the riser, especially on these, on the 76ers, on the Minuteman, and uh, see the details down here that hold the limbs in. If you don't have that limb perfectly seated in there, folks have just been tweaking that stay out and um, there's just not a lot of replacements out there these bows especially the 76ers were kids bows parents were buying them for the kids for like 35 40 bucks or under and now you're seeing them on ebay 100 bucks 150 bucks just um all us guys are just trying to relive our youth uh, i have a few of them and i uh, got a couple where the limbs are really bent but uh with a little bit of heat mild heat got to know what you're doing a little bit of flexing back um, they they're coming back in line and uh, they're just fun little project bows this one's a 40 pound bow and uh, I put a Flemish string on there not using fast flight especially with uh, no reinforced limb tips so you have to be careful on that do not use fast flight strings on these old bows you'll just saw right through the limbs but uh let's shoot a couple arrows and uh, i'll show you how she shoots and then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about uh buying bows on ebay craigslist and uh such come along join me now you guys get the bird's eye view i'm just shooting with an iphone here on the side of the house my little 10 to 17 yard range that i have just to uh keep the muscle memory going but Without further ado, let's fire a couple arrows down range. I must say she's smooth, but a lot of it has to do with the string, the uh, beaver balls that are on there. Just quiets down that shock, which by the way, I'm getting zero hand shock, and a lot of people have posted before that uh, they were getting a lot of shock. So a lot of it has to do with just dampening the string and the vibration. Haven't shot for a month. It feels good to be back out here just with the work schedule. It's just been tough. From the look at this target, it looks like I haven't shot in a month either. We're going to do a live view right now. So, we'll do a live view to show you that, yeah, I am human. And uh, a month off of practice, especially shooting trad, does affect your shooting. So, we're at about 10 yards. So I need to get back on it and uh, practice just a wee bit more. Well, let's try another round. Let's see if I can't redeem myself. 
that first round was uh, pretty pathetic. And it just shows you that when you're shooting trad, you got to you gotta practice. You got to stay on it. It's not like shooting a compound. You got to uh, practice that muscle memory. And taking that month off is really paid. So without any excuses, let's get her done. Shoot smooth. I'm shooting 500 spine arrows, and I think these arrows are a little bit over spine for this being 40 pound draw. My view. We keep it real on the channel. We're going to show you our successes and our failures. So, once again, I had my last three. Here's my last three right on the bottom, right here. But I was a little all over the place. So, keeping it real, department. Got to get out there and practice. So let's show you this bow up close and personal. We're just going to do a slow flyby. There's that old school patented almost bare 76 riser. Just in beautiful condition. Limbs are just in awesome condition. Just right there. And then there. But just old Grayling, Grayling, Michigan. So we know uh, that it was early 70s because Bear moved their operation to Florida in the mid to uh, late 1970s. So this bow is at least 40, 45 years old. But uh, it's still a pleasure to shoot. Now, let's talk about some of the talking points when buying a bow online like that. First off, especially on eBay, you want to look at the seller. What's the seller's rating? Do they have a lot of issues with shipping? Uh, do they have a lot of issues with maybe the description doesn't match the item that they're selling? You would like to think that there are a lot of uh, trustworthy, just and upright folks, but uh, there's a lot of uh, shenanigans and charlatans too that are out there on the internet. So, always look at the seller's rating. Plus, uh, do your homework. Look at the photos that the seller posts. If the seller only posts maybe one photo of the bow, uh, I would probably stay away from that. It probably means that there's something wrong with it. Also, read the description very well because the devil's always in the details. If uh, you're just quick to purchase a bow and you pull the trigger and they mentioned in this in the fine print that uh, the lamination of the limbs is starting to peel away well shame on you because you didn't take the time to do your homework but uh, look at photos I always look to make sure they have photos especially like of the limb tips the limbs themselves the riser the shelf, especially when I'm buying a trad bow, always look at that stuff. If it has minor limb twist, I mean, you can live with that. You can also work them out, and uh, maybe I'll do a video on that later on. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do that, and, uh, you know, everybody's got their different ways, and it can open up a hornet's nest talking about it right now, but uh, there's different ways to twist the limbs back. Sometimes people just have their string too wound or the wrong size string and it's too short and you have too many twists in it and just causing premature twist on the limbs. I've seen that happen many a times uh, just because they were too cheap to go out and buy a 10 or $15 string in the right length and they're just hell bent on they're going to make it. 
And I'm sorry, you're not going to twist three or four inches out of a string. If you do, it's just, you're, you're going to do harm to the bow. It's just not going to be a fun experience. So just spend the money, get the right string for it. Um, Craigslist. Buyer beware on Craigslist. I, I bought a few items on Craigslist, but uh, it's always weird meeting someone in a parking lot somewhere. It, it, it just seems like uh, a breaking bad deal going down. So I kind of shy away from Craigslist. There's folks that find a lot of good deals, but uh, just a personal preference of mine. Uh, eBay, for me, works really well, and uh, I like it. And there's been times where uh, I've contacted the seller and said, hey, this doesn't match, you know, uh, what you described, and I'm not happy about it. And they've been happy enough to uh, refund me, and all I do is just send the item back. So uh, eBay, there's just a little bit more protection there. And uh, the transaction, especially with PayPal and such, it's just, for me, it's just a little bit easier to uh, do transactions. But don't be afraid, especially when you're just getting into archery, to... Uh, buy an older bow. I've seen too many times where folks run out, they throw down the Visa, the MasterCard, and they wind up paying five, six, seven hundred dollars on a just a pimped out, tricked out bow. And then they realize after they shot it once or twice that, uh, hey, this isn't for me. And then they give it up and then they wind up selling it for half price of what it's worth. So, um, like, don't even be afraid to get like a Samick Sage takedown bow. I mean, they're very affordable right now. You know, 130, 140 bucks, you can find a really good deal. And uh, if you're looking to get into archery, you're looking to get in on the cheap, don't be afraid to try out these older bows. And, uh, you know, hey, some of them I bought for 50 bucks. Say you get a season or two out of it. Hey, you get a season or two, you shot your bow, you got some practice, now you got time to realize, hey, what do I want to upgrade to? Do I want to get, you know, that pimped out recurve bow? Or do I want to have a custom bow made? Choice is yours. So just a few options that are out there. I know that it's holiday season. There might be some good deals on eBay. I get updates all the time. I And I try to pass good leads on to my friends that I know like the 76ers or the old Ben Pearson Colts and all that. There's just so many good deals and only so much money. So with that said, this is John with the Wingman 115 channel. I thank you so much for checking in. Look for some new videos coming soon. Work's been crazy, but we're getting back into the swing. I got a new home studio. So this winter, I'll be broadcasting from the home studio on some videos. And uh, we're going to be getting out in the woods, doing some fun stuff. So as always, share comment and subscribe and i'll see you on the next video take care folks peace okay we have to redeem ourselves so give you an up close shot we're getting there Just shows that I got to get back out here on the range, but not bad. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.